Okay, so I started marking out the locations of the structures that I'll be using on this layout, as well as areas where I wanted to have some paving done. And the, uh, the solid white areas there along the back side of the track are where I plan to have structure areas, uh, the areas that are kind of outlined by foam. Uh, otherwise are the areas that I do plan to have paved. So, so in this area over here, I'll be basically paving this, making this sort of a, a parking lot, uh, you know, paved area related to these structures here. I'll have some loading docks for trucks and that kind of thing over here. And then on this side over here, uh, this will basically be kind of like a team track sort of thing. Um, I may also at times put structures there to uh, represent a different type of industry as well. But I do plan to have this whole area paved on this side and then also likely have a fence around it and a fence gate uh, along the, uh, the front end of this paved area here. Again, all these white areas back here will be um, continuous structure areas. I'll be marking out the locations for loading bays and that kind of thing. Uh, along here as well so I can get everything lined up correctly when I actually start building the structures. And I'll be using these as a template for the structure builds that I uh, actually start working on back at the workbench. So I made a sample here using this, uh, this spackling compound, mixing some paint with it, and did a thin layer here and a thicker layer here, and just trying to see how that would work out for doing the actual paving areas. Overall, it worked out pretty well in terms of the coloring. Now I'll mix up something sim similar to this for the, uh, the actual layout itself. I'll have to apply it in a couple layers because when you actually do put one of these layers on, you need to go back and sand it. You're going to get little cracks and imperfections that um, are pretty small in terms of you know real life, but you know in, in terms of HO scale, they're actually pretty large in terms of big you know cracks and holes in the pavement. So you'll go through and do another second coat on top of here, sand it again, a third coat if you need it. Again, just to make sure everything is is as smooth as you can get it after you sand it, and then. Uh, you can go on to the final preparation at that time. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some more of this colored spackling compound and apply it to the layout. So to do that, just using a container, I'm just going to pretty much glob it in there. And then I have a concrete-ish looking gray paint, which I'm going to apply. Um, I'm just kind of guessing how much I need. And then we'll add a little bit of uh, a beige color to that. This is just regular craft paint. And then I'll mix that up. So that looks pretty good. I can go ahead now and start applying that to the layout itself. So I do have some uh, actual crossing um, panels that I'll be using here. So I'm only going to apply plaster to the outside of this track. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and clean it up later and, and cut it to where I need to for the panels. I'll go ahead and pretty much use the track edge as a guide as I apply the plaster along this area here. And this never, you know, looks great the first time you do it. Um, again, this is one of those things you're gonna apply a layer, sand it, apply another layer, sand it, uh, and that kind of thing. And then you have to gradually get it to where you want it to look. And that's good enough for now again it's not perfect but i can come back and sand it um i'm probably gonna do three coats anyway so um you know i'll make the last one obviously a little bit smoother and then uh, the sanding really is what gets gets it to be really smooth at the very end to uh and that's where you need to spend most of your time to make things uh you know be as close to perfect as you can as you can get it so now i'll move on to the bigger uh paved area here and this one i'll be applying material uh between the tracks as well as around it Okay, so that's good enough for now. Again, it looks pretty bad at this point, um, but once this dries and I go through and sand it, it'll look better. And then I'll come through, put the second coat on, sand that, put the third coat on, sand that. And, uh, and that's when I'll, I'll make sure that the final coat is a lot better. At this point, I'm just trying to build up the material, get everything filled in good, and uh, kind of go from there. So it's the next day, everything is pretty much dried. Uh, it's actually not really quite, um, completely 100% totally dry, it's still just a smidge damp in spots. It's been warm and, and kind of humid outside, so the drying time has been been slow here in the garage, but, but uh, I mean, it's dry enough to sand at this point. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use 120 grit and then come back with a 220 grit sandpaper, get everything smooth, and then come back and do a, a skim coat of the same plaster material 
on top of that to get kind of a, an even smoother coat, which I can then go, come back and sand again. And, and that may or may not be the, next, the last coat. I may have to do a third coat. It just, you, know, you have to kind of keep working at it until you get it as smooth as you can, as you can get it to make it look, uh, look more realistic. This will get uh, fixed here and everything is relatively smooth again. Uh, when I do the, the next coat on, that'll help get everything even smoother. I'm gonna work on putting in another layer of this material and just try to get it uh, as smooth as I can get it on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove sort of these sort of form areas that I kind of tacked in as well as uh, where I plan to have the structures in place. Uh, do some final sanding again and, and, and finish work here on this uh, on these paved areas. So this area here is uh, for the most part good. Um, I do need to clean up some areas here around the edges. And I do want this area to be, uh, you know, again, concrete or represent concrete. And so I am going to score some expansion lines through here. Um, I'm not going to be super precise with this in terms of being, you know, exactly prototypical in terms of spacing and everything, but, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use the back of a knife and just do some score marks. I'm just going to basically roughly measure something that might be, you know, 14 scale feet, kind of like an average road width distance. Generally speaking, it's more important that you have, uh, for something, something like this, that you have the spacing even uh, more than that is actually prototypically exact because the eye is very good at, at seeing differences in spacing and, un and unevenness, but you know, it's a lot harder to judge whether it's exactly to scale. So this area is all scored, sanded, and pretty much ready for final finishing. Um, this area here does need a little more sanding. I'm gonna go ahead and do some of that first. Okay, so I need to work on cutting out these uh, wheel flange areas. I have to kind of just freehand it since the track is not exactly straight. Now let's go ahead and work on doing some expansion joints here. So after everything was dry and sanded smooth a few times, um, they go ahead and just put a couple coats of black wash, just black acrylic paint and some water to make a thin wash. Brushed it on there a couple times, wiped it off after a few minutes and uh, that kind of allowed the paint to kind of settle into the cracks and crevices, um, but be largely wiped off the top, although it does leave some, a uh, little bit of stain on the top surface, which kind of provides a little bit of aging effect of the concrete as well. Now I use the Summit Custom Cut grade crossing panels here, um, and uh, it does actually come with the ones that go on either side of the outside of the rail too. I, I, went ahead, I did not go ahead and put those on because I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do that um, without messing everything up too badly. And so I went ahead and left it off for now. So this side here was again pretty much the same as on the, uh, the other side of the layout. Again, just the, the multiple coats of the plaster material, sanded smooth, carved the expansion joints in there with the uh, back of a knife, did a couple coats of black wash to provide the aging effect and kind of show the uh, expansion joints a little bit more. 
and uh, like the other side, I'll go ahead and do some more weathering in detail after I do the surrounding scenery work. And uh, next I'll be doing some structure work, some scenery work. I'll be putting in some drainage dishes, a few things like that. Um, and I'm doing, you know, just sort of general scenery. I'm not going to go ahead and do any ballasting until towards the very end, I think, um, just to kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of serve as a way to sort of tie everything together um, in terms of the scenery and everything. So anyway, so that's a look at how I did the concrete areas on this layout. I was going to wait until I finished everything in terms of weathering and wrapped everything up. But since I'm not going to do that for a little while until after I finish the structure work and so forth, I'm going to go ahead and get this video out now. And then when I come back and do the final weathering and detailing on this uh, concrete, I'll do another video on that later on. And probably just part of the overall scenery work that I do. Um, later on as well. So anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.